With 15 minutes to go until the midterms, a huge swing in momentum for the GOP has Democrats wetting their pants. Sorry, Harold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are officially on a red tsunami watch, but it seems like nobody's told Joe yet. Instead of hitting the campaign trail and talking to voters, President Biden was cooped up inside a bu with a bunch of DNC staffers. I bet it smelled wonderful. Biden giving a rousing pep talk on how his party has it all in the bag. We're running against the tide and we're beating the tide. We, the Democrats, are the ones that are fiscally responsible. Let's get that straight now. Republicans are fiscally reckless, pushing tax cuts for the very wealthy that aren't paid for, and exploiting a deficit that is making inflation worse. Republicans are determined to hold the economy hostage, either given to their demands on Social Security and Medicare, which millions of Americans rely on and earned and paid for, or Republicans are going to crash the economy. That is rousing. And if Biden's blame the Republican strategy fails to catch on, there's the Nancy Pelosi method of changing the subject. It's about getting out the vote. Everything else is a conversation compared to that. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, you have to have inspiration. You can't run on empty. And the fact is, is that uh, when I hear people talk about inflation, as I heard him there, we have to change that subject. The fight is not about inflation. It's about the cost of living. But Are they connected? The <laughs> yes. Yeah. The media going one step further to help Democrats spin the bad news by saying inflation is all in your head. Joining me now to discuss this great inflation myth that I just talked about. I do not want to belittle anybody's experience with inflation. We are all feeling it. Uh, we, we are feeling it in our daily lives. It is real, but it has been transformed into something that Republicans, in particular running for Congress, are blaming Joe Biden and Democrats for specifically, when in fact there is no economic evidence uh, or mathematical evidence or any other kind of evidence that that's actually true. So I guess in MSNBC they're celebrating Halloween early because Velshi came as a park <laughs> ranger. Uh, <laughs> It's quite impressive. There are two big whoppers here. And Dana, I want to. Joe says the Dems are fiscally responsible. <laughs> How can that be? But then Nancy, and you and we all felt this when she said it, that it's not about inflation, it's about cost of living. Can someone explain this to me? Isn't the cost of living affected by inflation? Yeah, of course. I mean, I don't understand what she was trying to. I understand what she's trying to do. She yeah. did not succeed. And the weird thing about the president's speech today, he was giving it to Democratic staffers at the DNC. It wasn't even like you were going and trying to persuade independent voters. That's a kind of a strange place to do that. Let's look back at the Democratic narrative just this year. First, trans inflation was transitory. Then it was a rich person problem. Remember that little thing from the White House podium? Uh, then it was the Republicans will make it worse. Then it was, hey, at least Europe, Europe is worse than we are. Then it's changing the topic. They don't... Last February, in the State of the Union address commentary, I said that Biden's accomplishments are now vulnerabilities. And they only exacerbated that by adding more spending to the, um, to the what do you call that, checkbook. Yeah. <laughs> the American checkbook. Yeah. And, American, and Americans feel it, and they figured it out. But you cannot separate people's lived experience from the fact that they want to say, well, we have a 3.5% unemployment rate, and that should be enough. Therefore, we should all be happy and we should all be relieved. Well, people are not relieved. And if 78% of people feel that inflation is hurting them and 47% said that they've had to make cutbacks in their regular purchases because of inflation's made their lives so hard, then they're going to vote on that. Mm -hmm. There's just, you, can't, you can't change the subject from that. Exactly. You know, I'm going to do my Harold Ford impression. Harold, congratulations on that uh, coaching victory this Thank weekend. Thank you very much. It was a big win. I know that you were excited and a little nervous, and I want to wish you well. Having said that, <laughs> you must feel a bit nervous about what's happening. And doesn't the, this young woman to my right make a great mm. point that your party is starting to realize that the adult issues, inflation, crime, and border, are finally pushing out all that Twitter-based cult, cult stuff? Like, they realize they should have paid attention to this stuff. So the woke stuff, first of all, I'm delighted about this win Saturday. I think I'm going to retire. So <laughs> but it was soccer. We have to, kind, we have to very do it. Very kind of your text. <laughs> the, uh, voters are now being presented. I, I think you're right, uh, Dana. But voters are being presented a set of choices here right at the end. And I think to the extent that Republicans are able to focus, I think the biggest weakness for Democrats um, is that we have not developed a coherent easy to understand policy on the border, that we've not screamed we're against no cashless bail or we're against cashless bail. But I gotta tell you, when it comes to the economy and inflation, I think voters 
are have not lost their sense of humor about where the blame should 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 be assigned. I think the Fed ha has failed us in a lot of ways. Uh, they are, their primary responsibility is to curb and to fight inflation. They they neglected to do that. I think in the way they should have. I think Dana laid out politically. There were some Democrats who. Uh, uh, tag along in some of the, the way they talked about transitory and other things. We had an inflation problem a long time ago. There were Democrats, Republicans who, uh, who, who, who talked about it. I read a piece this weekend uh, in the New York Times Magazine, a congresswoman, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who seems to have her own thoughts and designs on what the majority should look like if the majority is there and the kinds of things they're You're going to do. You're a big fan of hers. No, I, I differ with her. I differ with her a lot. And I do think if you, if, you really, if you read her, I think you believe that there's going to be a lot of investigating. There's going to be a lot of exacting of retribution. And maybe that's what people want. I think voters see that. I don't think all the party is for that. But she said in that article that, she, that Kevin McCarthy was going to have to listen to her. It reminded me yeah. a little bit of some of the AOC talk. And I think that Nancy Pelosi has been able to tamp that down. The question is, can McCarthy do that? I think another big issue for Republicans is going to be Ukraine. Do we continue to support Zelensky? I think there is a there is a part of the Republican Party that said they don't want to do that, and I think it's going to be incumbent upon Senator McConnell, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. McCarthy, to say we will tamp that down. They've not done that, so I think as voters taking all of this, this this race is tight. I will agree with you. The momentum seems to have shifted a little bit more to the Republicans over the last few weeks. Two weeks ago, we'll see what turnout is, and we'll see see what this uh, final outcome might be. Yeah, I wonder though. I don't think the war is as big as a pocketbook, but who knows? You know, Judge, uh, you have high inflation, high crime, record border crossings, and it's still close. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that's what drives me crazy. It's still how can that be? You know, it drives me crazy too. I mean, but what, but what drives me even crazier is when you have a president who is literally telling the American people that our economy is strong as hell. And there he is, as you say, he's talking to these staffers with 15 mm -hmm. days to go. Why isn't he out in some of these tougher races, you know, campaigning with some of the candidates? And everything that he says is pretty much a, a, a lie. I mean, it can be gainsaid by think I always bring my chart. He keeps saying, all oh, the rest of the world is suffering. Well, they're not suffering the way we are. Countries that we wouldn't consider ha sh ha should be in the same league as we are. They're doing better than we are with inflation. But I think this whole thing about Nancy Pelosi and she, her saying, you know, well, I don't want to talk about that. You know, I want to change the subject. That's what the Democrats have been doing. They've been, it's like a shell game. They say, this is really what we need to be talking about. That the Republicans, they are the violent ones. You saw January 6th, they're the violent ones. And forget about the summer of 2020. Forget about the fact that crime is through the roof, and we're going to talk about it in the next segment. Forget about all that. Just listen to us. And then when you've got the mainstream media supporting them with it, with their bully pulpit, then Americans think, well, gee, maybe, the, maybe you know, it's, it's as bad as Biden says it is. But I'll tell you, the last the last interview Biden did where he's asked about whether or not Jill Biden supports him. I mean, this scary. man, where is the 25th Amendment? I get the, the you know, you don't want Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. but this man doesn't have his wits about him. Yeah, that was a bit weird. What about Ellie? Uh, is it Velshi saying that yeah. the inflation's a myth, Jesse? Yeah, he looked like Glenn Beck, didn't he? With gloves. Was it that cold this weekend? I didn't remember. I thought it was pretty nice. So he says it's a myth and there's no way that this is the Democrats' fault. But Morgan Stanley put out a report that said that it was the American Rescue Plan, $2 trillion, that supercharged inflation. And he's a business correspondent. He didn't know that. And then you had, I think it was Clyburn, come out and say, yeah, yeah, we juiced yeah, yeah, the numbers with inflation, but, you know, we had to do it. And he said that on MSNBC, so the business correspondent on MSNBC didn't know that, but I knew that. I'm neither a business correspondent and I'm on Fox. That's pretty stupid. Uh, I get nervous when I hear red tsunami. You know my thoughts right. on red wave. You're adding tsunami to this now. It's, like it's, it's too good to be true. Yeah, right. Now, Biden, everyone's been saying that they're going to have a recession next year. And now Biden conveniently says, if you elect Rep Republicans, yeah, you there's going to be a recession yeah. next year. Well done, Joe. So Nancy comes out and they book her. And she just sounds like a political hack. Yeah. She, you're asking her, what's the plan on inflation? And, the, and the, the Speaker of the House says, this is not our plan, but this is how we spin it. It's not our fault because it's happening everywhere. And that we're going to change it to now it's the cost of living. So permission to make an analogy. Yes. Let's say you have a horrible sex life 
And you go to your partner. <laughs> Why did I say yes? And you say, babe, we have a terrible sex life. What are we going to do to make this sex life better? Mm -hmm. And she tells you, first of all, all couples have terrible sex lives, number one. And number two, it's not a horrible sex life. It's a challenging sex life. Did your sex life improve? Jesse, it did not. Where did you come up with Nancy that? Nancy is spinning your sex life. What? What it's not getting any better. Nancy She's just spinning it. <laughs> oh my God. Perfect enough. I'm against cashless bail. Nancy I'm against Pelosi cashless knows bail. that these are her last interviews as speaker. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she's going yes. to Italy after this. Yes. You know, uh, that was really something. <laughs> that was something I was else. That's change, gonna, I was just trying to change the subject. That's going to make the highlight analogy. real. Hold my hand. <laughs> Coming up I next. I I should. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.